Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is my December lookbook. I kind of made enough things to make an entire video about my December sewing. Kind of. I had very ambitious plans for December, if you remember my plans video. And I got some of it done. I got some of it done. Obviously the first one is this dress. It is the McCall's 7537 in this dark green floral viscose that I got from the textile center. This is going to be my New Year's Eve dress and I am really, really pleased with how it came out. If you watched the vlog the other day, you'll know that I made a few tweaks to the pattern, not changes, because I have done a sew along for this dress, but there is a few things that I noticed from my pink version that I just wanted to amend for this version. So the first thing was that I added 5 eighths of an inch to the upper bodice this time. The lengthen and shorten lines, did it have lengthen and shorten lines? I don't think it did, I think I had to make those up, but I added those to the midriff panel, and whilst that has worked and it does sit on my natural waist, when I made the pink one I had to sew both of the waist panels or the midriff panels on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, because this part was just that little bit too short and I would have ended up with the seam kind of sitting kind of on the underneath of my boobs which is not a look that I like. So when I came to make this one I added 5 eighths of an inch along just the bottom of the panels. I didn't slash and spread the middle of the panel, I just added 5 eighths of an inch along the bottom and that's worked really well. I also added 2 inches of length to the sleeves so that they would stay down by my wrist when I pulled my arm out like that. I could maybe pop possibly add another inch looking at it like that but then I mean how often do I walk around like this not that often and when my arms are down it does sit on my wrist I also can pull it up I left the elastic loose enough so that it was comfortable to wear at this point of my arm whereas the last one that I did that I, I made the elastic quite tight at this point and then when it comes up it is quite quite noticeably tight. Not uncomfortably so, but notably. No, it's less comfortable than this one, should we say. But yeah, I am really pleased with this dress. I think it looks awesome. It's very on trend because dark florals are in this autumn winter. I mean, we've, we've been having the dis this discussion in the waffle comments. I am definitely not a fashionable person and nor am I trying to be. I want to make clothes that suit my figure and suit my aesthetic. I'm very lucky that I get to work from home so I don't have a uniform that I have to stick to or a, a dress code that I have to stick to. I think every job that I've ever had has had a uniform as well. Some of them have been much more fun than others. Playboy bunny. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, it's very nice not having to adhere to anyone else's rules for what I have to wear on a day-to-day -day basis. That has definitely kind of influenced my sewing over the last couple of years as well, as of course it will do. And uh, yeah, I'm really pleased that I have kind of found the type of clothes that fit me. Now I was going to make a half circle skirt to put onto the bottom of this dress but I was worried that I wouldn't have time to get this sewn up and that if I did have time to get it sewn up I was also worried that the circle skirt wouldn't have enough time to drop on the bias in the way that I would want it to for me to hem it in time to wear it for New Year's Eve because this is my New Year's Eve dress. So I decided to go with the rectangular gathered skirt that, that comes with the pattern and I do like it. I like the pink one although I haven't worn the pink one yet as we've discussed. I do really like this green one. As you've seen in the cutaways, I am wearing it with some brown, they they come right to my knees, some brown boots. I really wish I'd bought these in the black suede that next did them in as well because I absolutely love these boots. They're really comfortable. There is a little bit of a heel, so I feel a little bit glamorous in them, but they are very comfortable to wear and walk in. I have done that a few times already. So I'm gutted that I didn't buy the black ones, but I do really like how the brown ones look with this dress. As I say, I'm going to be wearing this on New Year's Eve. We have a very long day on New Year's Eve because Wilson has to go to Planet Hollywood to set up. Then we have time for dinner and a movie. And then we're going back for him to actually play and play in the new year, which is going to be really exciting, but it does mean he's going to be on stage when the new year comes in. So it'll just be groupy me on the side, on the side of the stage like happy new year babe <laughs> it's going to be a long day so i'm going to probably wear this with thick nun tights 
um, ballet flats because that's going to be comfortable. I have got some awesome over the knee lace up boots but they have got a heel like that on them and I think I'd have been alright for just the evening part of it but for the entire day I think that would be a mistake and I need to be comfortable because I don't want to be whining at him that my feet hurt. <laughs> I am really really pleased with this dress. I absolutely love this bodice. I again mentioned in the waffles that I would like to because there's a, there's a version that has ruffles along here and along here. I would like to make that version. I would like to put on a half circle skirt instead of the rectangular skirt because I'd like to see how that looks. This dress that has very 70s vibes for me, but I like that. And I would like to make a couple of versions with the shorter, uh, the, I think they do, they have fitted sleeves that just come just past the elbow and then they have like little cap sleeves as well then they have a pieced waistband and i think that could be really fun to play around with different fabrics to get a really awesome look yeah i i'm not so good at the print matching or the print clashing so i would uh yeah i'd, I'd it, it would be interesting to play around with the different variations of this dress, but I really, really love it. It fits me so, so well. It's actually comfortable. I can see more of this in my future. Now, I had grand plans to get a whole bunch of bags signed this month as well, and I got the green tapestry and green corduroy penny in done, and that's been sent off and is on its way. I didn't get the second one sewn. I have got it cut out, though, so that is going to be the first thing I do when I get back from London. I also didn't get, the, get to the NC CWs. But again, first thing I'm going to do when I get back from London is get those all done, sorted and posted out and that way the Patreon slate is clear for the new year which is going to be great. I'm going to be talking to you guys about Patreon in another video which is coming up in the next couple of days. I still can't believe that I'm filming a December lookbook and it's going to be up in December. Will wonders never cease. Now I, I don't know if you can tell, I have a cold at the moment. I have filmed all the twirls for everything that I've made this month. I'm going to show you the twirls and I'm going to keep the twirls up here but I am not going to change into everything just to sit and talk to you about it because just doing the twirls earlier it's exhausted me and I've got a lot of videos to film today. So I'm going to talk about the next dress and I'm going to go and grab, grab it so that I can show it to you here whilst you're looking at it here kind of thing. So I was really lucky and the lovely Alex from Gingerhead & Co sent me this beautiful floral French terry for my birthday this year and she sent me, very kindly sent me three meters of it and I thought I would have enough to make the McQuills 7634 set out of that. But unfortunately, it's not as wide as the Ponty I used, so three meters wasn't enough to do the top and the trousers. Now I was trying to come up with ways of color blocking the trousers and keeping the pockets, and I haven't worked it out quite yet, but I'm also tempted to make a zip up style hoodie with the with the remainder of this, and then also an infinity scarf to wear with this, because I kind of regret not putting on a funnel kind of collar onto it. So as I say, this is the McCall's 7634 top, but obviously with some changes. The initial one I made out of the blue ponty or the teal ponty had the lace up panel down the front and a hood. Now I love that and I wear that a lot, but the reason I didn't want to do it with this, this fabric is the inside of this fabric is bright white and I didn't want the hood, I didn't, I thought that would be really distracting. So I decided to make the front panel without the lace up panel detail here and then just draft a neckband for the new neck neck opening. I could have made this neckband probably another inch shorter, but I know for next time. And like I say, I kind of wish I'd put a funnel neck on it. So I am pretty much sure I'm going to cut off say 20 centimeters and make an infinity scarf out of uh, some of the fabric that I have left. But I think I wanna make the bomber jacket first. I'm really pleased with this. I wear this a lot. It's really comfortable. I decided not to make the Seamwork Astoria with this fabric because I wanted to be able to put things underneath this. And the Seamwork Astoria, the, the size that I've traced is basically a t-shirt on me, a tight t-shirt, which I like. And I can wear a vest under it and I can technically wear a t-shirt under it as well. This has just got a little bit more room and is very comfortable. And this fabric is just absolutely stunning and I love it so thank you very much for, to Alex for uh, spoiling me for my birthday and I'm really really pleased that I got this sewn up. Now this was supposed to be my Christmas day pyjamas for me opening my presents but with the time, by the time that we kind of like had gotten up and went downstairs to open our presents it was half past ten so it felt appropriate to actually put on my dress that I made and I made the victory patterns 
Jackie dress out of this absolutely beautiful velvet that I got from the Gold Hawk Road. If you've watched that video, you will know that one, fab one fabric shop was charging £15 a metre for this, and then the next one that I went into was charging £5 a metre for this. So I bought four metres from the <laughs> less expensive shop, obviously. Now, there is a slight flaw on this fabric. There is like a line running down just here. It's all the way and it's on uh, it's it's it was all the way down the fabric and I didn't notice it until I was actually wearing this on Christmas Day and I don't think anyone else would notice this unless I really pointed that out to them the other thing is that this fabric is very very thin so uh, the sleeves do ride up a little bit but I was hot most of the day so that was totally fine and I was pushing the sleeves up anyway the other thing is I have changed the back facing for the Victory Patterns Jackie dress, I've spoken about this before. The facing was smaller than the back panels and I just found that it kept, even with the understitching and the interfacing and doing everything as the pattern recommended, I found that the facing, the, these would roll out. So I kind of redrafted the facing to be exactly the same size as the back panel and that way I catch it into the sewing of this back seam here, as so it's under tension there, as well as at the waist, waist seam at the bottom here, rather than just what it used to be, which was under tension at the top where it was sewn to the neck facing, front neck facing, and then here, and then floating free on the inside of the dress. And I just find for me that makes it sit a lot flatter. So uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with this dress. I wore this all Christmas day. It is a stunning, stunning fabric. And I am going back to the Gold Hawk Road on the 18th of January. And if they have any left, I'm buying some for Alison in Australia. And I may also buy myself some of the other colorway because they had this on a mustard base with different colored leaves on it. And it was stunning. Although I probably would want to make the same jacket dress. And how many of these do I need? I have two velvet jacket dresses now. Yeah, I, ne I need them all. I need them all. <laughs> the last thing that I got done in December was Wilson's sleeves although technically they are not finished because I ordered some press studs to finish the cuffs like the original ones had been done and the part that came was faulty so I cannot put the press studs on I am absolutely gutted Wilson has decided that he wants to wait for his present till it's finished so I won't be bringing it up with me tomorrow but uh, yeah I'm really really pleased with it I did go for peacock lining. Wilson is, I think it's fair to say, a bit of a goth and uh, bright colours and bright patterns are not his thing but I needed this to represent me a little bit so <laughs> I put in peacock lining and it's a fairly dark peacock and realistically when he takes his coat off you're never really going to see it. I also, on your guys advice, added my KB label to the inner pocket because it's by Calvin Klein and now me. <laughs> So the leather is from Pittards. It is absolutely beautiful. I bought the texture, it's, it's called Cougar leather. I bought it because I wanted some texture on it, but it's also incredibly forgiving because of the way it's, it looks. There was a, there was a, uh, I, I caught a tiny little bit when I was sewing the sleeve in here. I caught a bit and I was just like, oh no. And I've unpicked it and you can't tell that, that where the needle holes are because of the texture that's on the leather which is a very happy accident so once the parts arrive so i can put the press studs on the cuffs this is then finished and i will report back and let you know what he thinks but i'm hoping that he's gonna love it but yeah that was the last thing that i made in december that's not 100 percent true i also finished the parrot ncw whilst i was doing my live stream at the beginning of december that thing's been cut out for months and has been sat there and i experimented a little bit with it and the experiment didn't quite work i tried adding in some extra card slot but I still am using the wallet and it's absolutely awesome. That was, that was the last thing that I made in December. So not the most productive of months, but it has been an amazing month. I have had family visiting. I have met Wilson's family. I've spent two weekends with him and it's just been really, really lovely. So I've had a great December and I'm very pleased with the things that I did get made especially this i can't wait to wear it on tuesday evening it's gonna be fun let me know in the comments down below which is your favorite item what did you guys get up to in december as well did you manage to get everything sewn that you wanted to or was it one of those ones like me where you were overly ambitious with your plans and then realized that actually this is one of the busiest times of the year and what the hell were you thinking let me know in the comments down below i'd be really fascinated to hear 
So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.